Okay, so let's talk about kind of what, okay? So it starts off with the four basics of recruiting. That's in the Millionaire Maker Manual. So turn your Bibles to <laughs> page 212, I think. Um, I've got the second edition, and it's like one something, 196, okay? All right. So the, the analogy of the four bases, I'd like you to use a baseball diamond. Okay, the baseball diamond, you know, just because of this last season of baseball was rocking. It was a really great season of baseball. Okay. So you got the baseball diamond. You have home plate here. Okay. You've got first base, second base, third base. All right, that's your baseball diamond. So what's the analogy of the four basics of recruiting? Well, first basic of recruiting is you've got to start off with a list of names. Okay, list. What is your list of names? Your list of names are people that you know. Okay, people that you know. And so kind of the concept of the list is not regarding... Um, uh, if you think that they need this or not, there's no prejudging in this. No prejudging at all. You just, it's just people that you know. Just brainstorming people that you know, right? And so um, one way to build a list is do MC backup, okay? Or contacts to Excel. Okay, these are two apps. What, the, what these apps do is that it transfers the contact list in your phone into a spreadsheet, okay, into a spreadsheet, all right? And this is where you start your name list of people that you know, all right? So people that you know are where you start your business. So how do we, you know, how do we kind of, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but the mechanics of a list, the things I like to look for, Um, okay, so you got your spreadsheet of the people Okay, so in here it says getting a list You got your cell phone with you. Is there anybody you think Would not want to do this in your phone contacts and you'll get a yes or no great Who are the top five people you think want to do this and then you have the new agent write it down Right? So you're looking first for the top five people, the people at the top of their mind that they think are the people they think can do this. Usually um, someone who's really fired up is a person that they get, they want to get rocking with. And they typically are maybe people that have credibility. If they're sharp, their top people are going to be sharp. Okay. So so what I like to do with the list is what I'm after on a list of name is the top 25. Their top 25. I look for the top 25 people that they know. All right, and then I want to get started with the the top five. So how do I identify the top 25? Well, I look at what we call the bell curve, the bell curve of people that um, that that exhibit a certain quality. Now, we're talking percentages, okay? I'm going to take my jacket off because now it's getting warm because I'm getting warmed up. <laughs> I'm getting warmed up. So, we're talking people... Okay, so I'm not wanting to offend anyone. We're looking for people that have energy. Like, when I got in this business, I was 39. Actually, when I got into a similar business, I was like, what, um, 33. So I was in the bell curve um, when I got into a similar business where I met Andy. Andy's four years younger than me, so he was like 30. When I, we started the business, he was uh, 35. Now it's 39. Levantovich and Connor's definitely in the bell curve. Like you look at all the top NEA leadership, the Alliance leadership, when we started the insurance business, we were all pretty much bell curve, bell curvers. Okay, so let me identify what that is. In basketball, one of the highest percentage shots that you can make, the higher, 
the most the highest percentage shot you can make on the court is a is a dunk, right? Is a dunk. But if you can't dunk the ball, the next highest percentage if you're just doing a layup, you're right under the basket, right? But as as you progress out from the out from the elbow, which is um, okay, as you get further back, 15 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, the NBA three point line, the percentages go down, right? So here's what I'm talking about. Why not build your business on the high percentage shot doing layups, right? You know, if you're a good three-point shooter, you, you'll have a better percentage than other people, but your best percentage will be right under the basket, shooting under the basket, or doing a layup. I'm talking about layups. You're building your business. You want to build your business on layups, all right? So what is a layup? A layup is someone in the bell curve, someone who's between 25, 35, married, no kids, um, they own a home, so there's some income stability there. Okay, uh, college educated, or you know they have they have a, a very strong position in the work world, right? And they want something better for their families. I'm talking ambition. I'm talking energy. All right, energy to stay up late at night building a business that they want so bad. Okay, I, I'm. People are entrepreneur, people that either own businesses now or desire to own a business. I'm looking for these qualities. They tend to be the, the layups, not the three-pointers, okay? Look, if you hire someone who's 75 years old and they got a fourth win to start a new career, okay, well, God bless them, man. We're still going to bring them in. We're still going to work with them, all right? But chances are they're not going to be wanting to drive you know, six hours to go see Andy Albright at a boot camp, okay, chances are, all right? Um, they don't have a lot more time on this earth, right? So it's maybe harder to build a dream, I don't know, whatever, okay? Maybe they can sell, so let's, you know, Helen Ellen Rosen, notwithstanding, but out of Helen Ellen Rosen, who's like, you know, in their 70s, how many of Helen Ellen Rosen are there in the Alliance? There's only Helen Ellen Rosen out of 2,000 agents, Okay, so remember, they're the three-point shot. I'm talking layups. Who are the layups? It was when Andy Albright got started, when I got started, when Fitz got started, when Patrick Connors and Mike and Noel Levantovich got started, Stephen Davies, when he got started. Okay, you look at us now, at our age now, gang, we were young. <laughs> we're talking 18 years ago. We were bell, bell curve. And we built our business on bell curvers. Okay, so if you're not in the bell curve now, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about who do you know? You're, I want you to do layups, okay? Because you're going to have a high percentage chance of finding someone. Okay, but you show it to everyone, okay? So let me just say, I'm looking as an upline to help someone with their top 25 that are bell curve. So what do I do on a list of names? Well, I put... I get the MC back up and we list them all out. Okay, the names of all their people. All right, so what I do is I do the star system of putting a list together. So I, I want to know who's between 25 and 35. So let's say this person's between 25, 35. This one isn't, this one is, this one is, this one isn't, this one isn't, this one isn't, this one is, this one is. Okay, those are my 25 to 35. Okay, who's married? Okay, let's see. Um, I say no kids. Okay, I say no kids. I, I really do want to find the, the married, the dinks, the double income, no kids. So let's say, yeah, this person's married, no kids. Married, no kids. Married, no kids. Married, no kids. Okay, married, no kids. All right, there you go. Okay, who are homeowners? And they may not know. Just do the best you can do. Okay, well, this one owns his own home. This one does. This person does. This person does. This person does. Okay? Now, who do I know is they own a business or they have owned a business? Business owners. Okay? Well, this guy has owned a business in the past. Those are the things on the side. This person. Got this person. All right. 
and that's it. Okay, so who owns their own business? Who's disgruntled? If you know, if you know they're looking, you know deep in your heart of hearts, they're looking for something else. Okay, that person, this person, you know, this person's complained to you, this person's complained to you, this person's complained to you about finding something else. All right. Um, okay, another one, college degree. Okay, not that college degree means anything, but it gives you maybe some sense of their, you know, they did enough to get through college, which, <laughs> okay. So this person, college degree, college degree, college degree, college degree, college degree. Okay. Something like that. Okay. I mean, you check with your upline on, on their criteria. Other things I like, military. I like uh, if they're in the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. It just speaks to their character. You know, they do a lot of volunteer stuff. Those are just some other things. But these are maybe some of the main things I look for. Okay, you insert whatever your criteria is, but in my years of doing this since 1993, I've found success with a lot of people in this area right here. In fact, Patrick and Mike fit this criteria right here. I mean, when you actually, when you look at all the top leadership, we re really kind of fit this criteria right here. Okay, maybe the kids, maybe we had kids. You know, Mike and Noel did not. Okay, and you can see what they're doing, right? So I'm just kind of going by what I see. Okay, so then how do I know who are the top people? Well, obviously the ones with the number of stars. So it's like ding, ding, ding. This is going to be the first person I call. <laughs> the next person I'm going to call is this person. Okay, the next person's got three stars. I'm going to call, I'm going to call all of them. But in terms of priority, and then I'm going to have the person I'm working with listen to me make calls, and they're going to know that, hey, <laughs> it's not that hard. In fact, what I'm going to tell them is, well, I'll, I'll go over that later, but you start with the list of names, and you get your upline to help you call your top 25, all right? And I want to know what your top five are, and then the, the 20 after that, and this is how I look for them, okay? So this is what we do. The first is putting a list of names together. Starts there. You can add to your list, okay? So you run out of people that you know. This is all the people that you know. So then you add your list by putting ads, like Craigslist ads, getting resumes, Indeed, right, monster resumes, uh, meeting people, clients that you sit down with, that's something of insurance. These are all the other ways because, you know, you know, do you know more people than you don't know? That's the question. Do you know more people than you don't know? The answer is, is, well, obviously, you don't, you, you, you don't know more people than you don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that's home plate is the list of names. The second basic is the phone call. So really, the phone call, the gist of the phone call is you're picking up the phone just to see if they're looking. So the question you're asking, basically, is are you looking? Are you looking for an opportunity? Are you looking for a way to change your life? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired? And everybody on this call that's listened to me, you know that there is a reason why you've joined us. Because all of you listening to this were looking. So the criteria is someone asked you, you answered an ad, and you said, yes, I'm looking. Like when Andy called me, baby, I was looking. <laughs> okay, I said, yeah, man. I didn't even really ask what it is. I just said, yeah, what are we doing? It's like, what are we doing? It was a sumptive close when Andy called me. What are we doing? <laughs> and I think I did pretty good in this. So the phone call is just checking interest. Hey, are you looking or not? Yes or no? It's really a yes, no, maybe. There are three possible answers. Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Phone call is very simple. It's the four things of a phone call. Okay, the four basics of a phone call. You're just gauging interest. So... 
the four basics of phone call is North Carolina insurance, North Carolina, my buddy in North Carolina doing a project insurance, you know, and basically are you looking, okay, are you looking? Okay, the phone call is simple. Well, basically my phone call is, hey, Joe, my name's Alex. Okay, now when I do a phone call, I don't say, hey, I'm in business with your buddy. I don't say that because I, let's say they're, the person I'm calling is way sharp and they, maybe they may not think as much of their buddy being in business, just, you know, what for whatever reason. They don't maybe have um, as high esteem for their buddy that you're working with as they do about themselves. So I don't want to, to put it, um, um, I don't want it to cloud their judgment about me calling. Okay, so for example, if the guy's working at McDonald's and he does the fries at McDonald's and I'm calling his buddy's dad, who's a financial planner, who's not very happy what he's doing and he's 35 years old, okay, I'm not going to call him and say, hey man, I'm buddy with Fred. You know Fred, he's the fryer, your, your son's friend who's a fryer at McDonald's. It's like, I'm in business with him. See, because then that puts his credibility on me. I don't want to do that. See, I don't presume to know what the credibility factor is between the two. So I say, hey, hey, Joe. Hey, man. Hey, listen, um, I've got a buddy of mine um, who owns a, fin a large financial company in North Carolina. They're in the insurance business. And we're looking right now for some people in the local area that are that might be open to uh, working with some of our insurance companies. Right now we're doing a project with Mutual of Omaha. Um, I was talking to Fred. Fred mentioned you might be open to something right now. I'm just, just checking to see, are you open right now to other things outside of what you do full-time, maybe on a part-time basis? That's just a phone call. I don't do anything complex, okay? It's just laid back. I'm just, look, I'm just finding out if they're looking. All right. I talk about buddy in North Carolina. You know, in my mind, it's my buddy who is president CEO of a multi-million dollar financial company. I don't say all that, but that's all the stuff behind my words, right? It's important what's behind your words when you say what you say, right? My buddy owns a financial company in North Carolina. We're doing a project with Mutual of Omaha right now in the insurance business. We're looking for some help. You know, are you open right now? Okay, now they could say, yes, I am, like I did, or they say, no, my plate's full. Okay, when they say no, awesome. I don't try to turn them around. I don't go, oh, God, please, this business will change your life. It's called residual income. It's called time compounding. You can make money while you're sleeping. You've got agents in Hawaii that's making you money while you're sleeping. Ah, uh, man. We're going to change the world. God, come on, man. You, you're going to sound like a cult member, okay? I'm not trying to recruit them into the, the, the Sun Young Moonies, okay? I'm just checking to see if they say, no, nah, I got my plate full. Okay, that's awesome. Hey, listen, do you know any uh, real sharp uh, people that have great sales skills that uh, maybe we can interview? Interview, right? It's not a multi-level. Okay, this isn't a multi-level, by the way. It's a multi-level pay system, but not a multi-level marketing system. Why? Because we market with leads, okay? So that's a phone call. Phone call's simple. We just check interest. They say yes, great. They say no, great. Or they might say maybe. Well, maybe I am. Okay. And they'll say maybe. It depends on what it is. What, what kind of job is this? I say, well... Listen, right now, I don't have a whole lot of time. You ever heard of Mutual of Omaha? Yeah, I've heard of Mutual. We're doing a special project with them. We've got people that have identified, we've identified in your area. They're interested in sitting down with some to help them out with their mortgage protection insurance. You know, mortgage protection insurance, where if you die, it pays the mortgage off for their family. And we've got people that want to sit down with a, um, with a rep, one of our reps. And we just needed someone to go meet with these people part-time, full-time, whatever time. It's about 500 bucks a pop. Um, so we're doing some interviewing right now. My buddy um, down in North Carolina is looking to interview some people right now. So I'm just checking. That's all, I, you know, we can get into it later, but 
you know, um, we need some help. Can you help us out? Sit. Can you help us out? That's a phone call. So what you do is you call your people, and it's like, even if this guy's super sharp, maybe he's not interested. It's a process of crossing off names. They're not interested. They're not interested. Okay, this person, ooh, they're interested. Okay. I'm going to find the people who are interested who says yes. They say yes, I'd be open. So once you filter, remember, filter does two things. You filter people out and you filter people in. These people I filter in, I take them to second base. And this is show the plan, okay, or interview. Basically, what I do is an interview. All right, I'm not going to go a whole lot of details on the interview other than the, the, interview is very, very, is <laughs> the interview is very basic, okay? Really, the interview kind of sounds like sales, right? You bond and rapport with them. You want to get to know them. You want to find out about them, right? You find um, their why. Why would they want to find do something different than what they're doing? What is their why? And then the last thing is, if they got a strong enough why, then you show them the plan. You show them how our business works. All right? You show them how our business works. And then at the end of this, you see either yes, I'm interested, or no, I'm not. And the question is, okay, so the question here is, are you looking? The interview is, the question you're asking is, are you looking to make money are you looking to make money the way we make money all right okay so so the series of the uh, four basics is asking a series of questions all right Putting a list of names together, which is, the question is, who do you know? Okay, this is asking you, who do you know? You, the agent, who do you know? That's the first question. The second question is the list of people you're saying, are you looking? The third question, when you interview them, are you looking to make money the way we make money? Very simple. And you do it through... You bond a rapport, create some rapport with them, you find out why they're looking, and then when you find out why they're looking, you're going to show them our program, show them the plan that fits what they're looking for. Okay, if they're only looking for a certain thing, they're just looking to flush their job because they hit their job. Okay, Joe, that's awesome, man. What do you do? Well, I'm an architect. All right, so how much would it take for you to replace your job? Well, I make... Um, you know, 75000 a year. All right, so maybe six grand a month would probably do it. Oh, man, if I could make six grand a month. All right, that's cool. Anything, any other reasons? Well, I want to get out of debt, but, I mean, I really want to get out of my job. I hate my job. It's pulling me away from my family, and he starts going into you. It's like, oh, my gosh, you got a serious reason why. So you know what I'm talking to him about? I'm going to talk to him about how our business will help him get out of his stupid job for about 6000 a month. And so I don't make it more than that. I, I don't say, hey, you could be a millionaire. I say, you know what? Here's the transition. The transition is, you know what? We've got a lot of people that have done that, that have replaced their jobs, you know, $75,000 a year job. We've got a lot of people that have done that with us. So by you making that statement, because that's what he's hoping, that you're going to tell him that he can do it with us. And that's, I'll tell him, we got, we got a lot of people doing that, that have done that. In our 18 years of doing this, we found a lot of people that have done what it is you want to do. You're not saying you did it, but you've got the credibility, the business that have people that have done it. You can introduce them him, to them, right? And so I say, so this is how our business works. And then I go into just short we got this thing called lead program. People are expressing interest and want to sit down with someone like a, a licensed rep. We go over their house. We show them a program. They sign up for it. The average 
um, commission we make is about 500 bucks a home. So, you know, to make six grand a month, what is that? How much would that be, Joe? That's about 12 homes. So basically you're averaging maybe three to four homes a week that you're taking care of. And if you've got all these leads of people, you just sit down with three, four people, and you basically replace your job. So that's about it. That's, you know, you may want to do more because I don't know if you want to stop there at, you know, making six grand a month. You know, we got people making, you know, uh, 40 grand a month, but I, I, I'm not saying that's what you want. Okay, I tease them a little bit of what's possible. But I say, you know, we can do, we can do that. So do you think, you know, would that help you? If we could place your income, would that help you? Oh, man. Yeah. Boom, it's done. I didn't tell him how he could build Go EVP. I didn't tell him how he could, you know, make his dreams come true, that he can own a home on a beach in Florida. I don't go into it because what the guy wants right now is to replace his income. So I always say, you know, we could do that. You know, we probably could get you, you know, a couple grand a week, actually. You know, so if you want to do more, it's just maybe closing maybe five homes a week. You take care of five homes a week, you're going to be in the six-figure income level. All right? So I tell them what, that we can satisfy his needs, but I don't go higher than that. When I was a recruiter, I was an executive recruiter. I was a headhunter. And people can only believe maybe 25% more than what they're doing. If you tell a hundred thousand year guy that he can make, you know, five hundred thousand, it's not. I promise you, it's not as believable to them as making one hundred twenty-five thousand. Do you see what I'm saying? So I say, you know, if they're already making one hundred thousand, go, you know. The other thing I like to find out here is what's the most you've made in your career, because we've got guys that were in mortgages. People in mortgages that were making three hundred thousand right now they're making a hundred, and so I use that because his mind's already been stretched to three hundred thousand. His interest is getting just replacing his hundred thousand dollar job. But if I know he's made three hundred thousand, I'm going to tell him that you know we can do a hundred. That's just two thousand a week. You're like taking care of five homes, but you know. If you want to get back to that 300,000 level, we've got a lot of people doing that too. Really. So what you did was you told him he could do better than what he's doing. But you know what? We can get him 300,000 where he mentally, he has made before. He's not making it now. He hates being what he's, he's doing now. But he remembers how awesome it was at 300,000. You see what I'm saying? You've got to find out. That's asking them questions. Their why. And then you show the opportunity to conform with what they're doing. Right? It, it, with what they want, I mean. How our program can satisfy what they want. I don't tell them about anything other than satisfying what they want. Right? Never talk about we've got people that gotten off alcohol and drugs. We've got people that have changed their lives. Man, you, you see, again, you're gonna sound like a cult member, and this ain't no cult. All right, it's a culture, not a cult. Third base. This is the follow up. Follow up and get started. The GS3. That's third base, the GS3 process, the goal set process, the get them started process. All right. And so, again, you got to figure out, you got to begin with the end in mind. Right. And so the three things we're trying to accomplish in the get them started process is LLC, LLC, list, license, okay, license, and the next conference, LLC, List License Conference. That's what we want to do with them. That's how we follow up and get them started. The getting started part, this is 50% of the business, by the way. This here is 50%. The other 50 is first uh, home plate, first base, second base, third base. This is 50%. This is so important, getting them started correctly. Okay? Because ultimately what you want is someone 
who has a dream and goal, they want to accomplish it working with us, right? And they want to do everything it takes by plugging into our system to do it, okay? So we've got this slick way, and you, this is the thing we used to teach in the Alliance all the time. Again, you always got to remember the end in mind. What is the end in mind? List license conference, all right? So how do you do that? Well, we have this thing called the LWAC. Okay, it's called the LWAC Schwack. <laughs> okay. Oh man, we used to do this over and over and over and over and over and over again. We used to teach it all the time. People used to have it memorized, but now we got away from it because it's a basic. We have a poster at NEA on the LWAC. All right, some of y'all. You know, if you've been with us a well, while, I might even have it in your offices, but we don't teach it, and we need to teach it more because it's the most finesse way for a brand new person who doesn't know what they're doing. Now, you want your agency manager, your upline growing manager, to do the follow up on your new people so you can learn how to do it. Okay, because it's that important. You funnel them to your upline, your upline will do the LWAC on them. Okay, so what is the LWAC? Okay. This is like the way, like some people are scared to get lists of names from people or to move them forward. Look, everyone's got to be motivated to do what they need to do, but people are motivated by their self-interest, all right? People are only made it motivated by their self-interest. They're not interested in what you want, but, but you know what you want. You want to get them started. So how do you get someone started where it's their idea to get started and not yours? Okay, and so there's this thing called the LWAC that finesses them into getting them started. Now, they may do some of it, all of it, but you got to do it with every single one so you know the ones that you want to work with right away. The ones I want to work with right away that do, are the ones that do all three of those. The ones that I'll work with, I mean, I will still work with them, but I'm not going to be as intense about them, right, are the people that do two out of three, whatever, you know. The ones that do more I'm, more, I'm in it more with them. The ones that do less, I'm less in it with them. I still want them to succeed, but my time, energy, and effort are focused on the ones that do all three. Make sense? So what I, how I do the LWEC is I find out, so Joe, you told me what you want, so let's go over that again. So you find out their goals, what they want to accomplish. So, go, so Joe, when you, okay, so you show them plan, then you follow up with them 24 to 48 hours. So they went to a um, hotspot meeting, right? Or if you've showed them the opportunity, okay, you want to, at the follow-up, you revisit their goals. So, so Joe, and, and actually it's better to have their wife there too. So Joe and Mary, you know, does the business make sense? Yeah. Makes total sense. Why does the business make sense to you? So I always ask questions. I lead them down the road. Why does this make sense to you? What are you trying to accomplish with the business? Detail for me why the business would be important to you to put time, energy, and effort into. And I'm looking for their goals, their why. Okay, so let me just, let's call it what it is. What is their why? And so Joe says, you know, number one, I want to get out of my job. I hate my job. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I like to quantify it. So he said, well, you know, 5,000, 6,000, actually 6,000 a month would help me flush my job. Okay, cool. 6,000 a month. Okay, so let's say you flush your job, you're working with us still, you're making money, you're paying your bills. What else? What else is there out there that you'd like to do? Well, you know, my wife, right now she's working as a, you know, she's working, she has to do this other job just to make, make ends meet. And I'm just tired of her working. You now she's dressing up, going out the door. We got to get childcare. Okay, so, you know, you want to have your wife come home, she, would, she wants to flush her job. So what is that? What will that take? Now that take another maybe two thousand a month. Okay, that's cool. 
anything else, anything else you want. And let's say we flushed her job, she's full-time at home, wants to be with the kids and raising the kids. You're doing this, you know, uh, 6,000 a month, you're probably only working about 20 hours a week. I mean, what else are you interested in doing? Well, man, if we could just do that right now, it's like, I, I, I will build their dream, but if that's all they want right now, they, they're gonna, like, and so how I know is I'll ask, so are you serious about that? Is that something you really want to do? Because I will help you do that. Is that something you really want to do? You're gonna give up time, energy, and effort of what you're already doing, and you're gonna, you would focus on this, to move forward with us to be able to get these things that you want. Do you really want this? So, yeah, man, I wouldn't be here if I didn't. All right, great. Well, that's why I'm here, because I'm gonna help you do that. So in order to help you get to 8,000 a month, let's pay you a six-figure income. Would you like me to tell you the four things that you got to do in order to make that happen? The four things that other people in our business have done to be able to make six figures a year, because as you're talking about 8,000 a month, right? It's about six figures a year. And all of them that have done this and flushed their job, brought their wives home from work, all of them have done these same four things. Would you like me to share with you what those four things are? Okay, look, if you built that Y up hard enough, that dude's going to be like leaning. He'll be leaning in. Okay, Alex, tell me. Tell me what I got to do. Because you've built this up with what he wants so bad that he's hanging on your every word. Because you said, there, we got a lot of people that, you know, have done what that what you want to do. But they've done these four things in order to be successful doing it. Do you want to know what those are? Man... He's at the edge of his chair. You got him. Now, this is how you tell them, how you share with them to move forward. Okay? Now I'm getting some. Am I getting... <laughs> yes, tell me, Coach. I love Bettina. She cracks me up. Okay, now, now you're wondering, right? What, should, what, should, what, what am I going to say? Because all of you should have mentally gone through what you want, okay? So let me tell you simply what you got to do. Joe and Mary, first, you got to be willing to listen, okay? Listen, if this is one thing that you understood about our business, all right? I don't make money until you make money, right? Because there's that overhead percentage that I make on you. So why would I ever tell you something that would hurt you. Do you see how that works? Like, if I hurt you, I hurt my family. So, you know, <laughs> meaning that if I help you, then I'm helping my family. Does that make sense? So I would never tell you anything that would hurt you. I would only recommend, and the way our system works, and Andy Albright, right, and the Alliance business, the only way it works is we help you become successful. So we're never going to tell you, recommend, coach you on doing anything that would hurt you. Now, it's not a job, so we can't force you to do anything. It's an all-volunteer army. But if you're serious about eight, making 8000 a month, then you got to be willing to listen to my coaching, willing to listen to our conference calls, willing to listen to Andy Albright, coach you on our, on our MP3s. All right, we've got meetings. Are you willing to listen at meetings that we put together? Because in order for you to do this, you got to be a good listener. So is that something you think you can do, being a good listener? They say, oh, yeah, I'm coachable. I'm coachable. I am coachable. Awesome. So notice how I tied listening to what they want. See, people are motivated by, motivated by their own self-interest. So I tell them the four things to give what it is they want. Boom. They don't dispute me because I've said all the people that have done what it is they want have done these four things. Okay? Okay, here's the second one. Work. you got to be willing to work. Right? I mean, look, you know, 
So I, I go kind of negative reversing mode here. I go, you know, this the business takes work. You know you're going to have to not do stuff that you're currently doing and devote time to this, right? You know that you're going to have to devote time to this to replace your job. And you can do it part-time, by the way. You can do all this part-time. We're talking, you know, maybe five to five to seven homes you're taking care of a week. All right, you got to make the time to do that. You got to make time to educate yourself. There's going to be time you have to get, you know, your license to do it. All right. So let me ask you to replace your job and to have your wife flush her job. How many hours do you think that you can carve out of your time in order to devote to something like this? That's that's a take the temperature question. That tells me how bad they want it. Right, because he's already working a full-time job. Maybe he's even working more than 40 hours a week. But it tells me how bad they want it. I want to measure. I, I'm not going to tell them how many hours it takes. I want them to tell me how much they're willing to put in. I'm not going to unnecessarily limit what they want, how much time they put in. I want to know how much they're willing to put in. Does that make sense? So tell me how much time you're willing to put into something like this. Because you know it's not going to be a hobby, right? I'm sure you have hobbies. Okay, hobbies don't make you money. This will make you money. So how much time do you think? Ah, oh, man. Look, I, I really want to do this. Man, I got 20 hours. I, I could do 30 hours a week. Okay, fair enough. I think that on 30 hours a week, if you're willing to put that time in, I think you got a shot at making that happen. I'm telling them, oh, for sure, dude. So you got a shot of making that happen. If you really put effective time in and you do what we recommend and teach, you know, 30 hours a week, you, you should be able to do that. It could be 90 days from now. It could be six months from now. Okay, but we can help you do that. All right? Cool. So you're willing to work and put the work in that we recommend? He says yes. Okay, great. Okay, the next thing, are you willing to associate with people who are where in life you want to be? In other words, do you know that your circle of friends, you're probably making, you know, 5,000 more, 5,000 less a year than they are? And in fact, sometimes the people you hang out with are what's limiting you from the kind of income you're wanting to make. I mean, would that be true? Or do you hang around millionaires? Oh, no, I don't. Well, we believe in the power of association. If you associate and hang out with people that make more money than you, chances are you're going to make more money. It's sort of this vacuum that kind of pulls you to their thought process because the key to making money is changing how you think, changing how you think about making money and doing something, getting into a vehicle that will allow you to make the money you want to make, right? And also change your thought process. Like it's, it's kind of like your kids, right? So would you like your kids hanging around drug druggies, or would you like your kids hanging around ambitious, college-bound kids? Which do you think you'd want your kids to hang around? Well, obviously, the college-bound kids. Why is that? Well, they hang around them. They're probably going to want to do the same thing as their friends, as opposed to the druggies that all they want to do is smoke weed. Right. So do you think if that works for your children, do you think it'll work for you? Absolutely. See, you ask them questions, okay, does that make sense, Joe? Now, we've got different ways of associating. So look, this is where you're planting seeds in our system. He's already said he's going to have 30 hours that he can devote to this. Let's fill his time up with how he can associate, become successful, because we know that's the key to success in our business. So here's how we associate. We've got a thing called Hotspot Meeting. All right, we do it every week. It's Thursday night from 7 to 10. And that's an important power of association because you're going to learn from the people that are making this business work and happen. You're going to have different managers coming in teaching what they've done to become successful, what they've done to make a hundred grand a year in our business, which is what you want to do. Remember, everything we're recommending is goes back to that. We always point back to what they want. It's self-interest, right? So, so we have hotspot meetings. We got these conference calls that we do. All right, we've got conference calls, and if you're working, you can't listen to a conference call. They're always going to be made available on a playback. So are you willing to, you know, associate by listening to conference calls? 
We've got MP3s. Okay. We have, um, we believe in book reading. Here's another thing. We've got this conference coming up. It's called National Conference. And, or it's whatever conference coming up. It could be Instant Thunder. It could be National Conference. It could be Family Reunion. This is going to be one of those functions. Or, hey, man, my buddy Andy Albright is coming out from North Carolina. He's going to be in Columbus, Ohio um, two weeks from now. Okay, I'm promoting the next function. I'm not promoting a function that's a year and a half away or a year away. I'm promoting the next thing he needs to be at. Hey, Andrew, another power of association. We've got this thing called National Conference coming up in January. It's where all, everyone comes in from all over the country, Hawaii, Alaska, everywhere to come in. And that's where we get fed. We get intense teaching. But you know what? That's where people like this who have done what it is you want to do, they're going to be there. You get to talk to them. How they're able to flush their jobs, how they're able to bring their wives home from work. Do you see how I go back to that? I plant the seed of the conference. This is a power of association. Joe, do you think you'd be willing to associate? Yeah, absolutely. Check. Okay, and then the C is are you willing to change? Look, Joe, change is the, one of the hardest things to do. Changing your habits from what you're currently doing to make money to what we're doing to make money. You got to change that. You got to change how you think because success is how you think. So you got to change how you think there as well to become successful with us. Um, and here's another example. Joe, we're selling life insurance for 15 companies. Do you have a life insurance policy? Um, yeah, I do as a matter of fact. Who's it with? Um, it's with um, uh, Mass Mutual. Okay. Well, look, there's a saying that says a good cook eats his own cooking, right? So wouldn't it make sense for you to buy a life insurance policy for you and your family with us, with the products you represent, than keeping that mass mutual product? Wouldn't that make sense? Like if a client asks you, so what do you have? Wouldn't it be better to say mass mutual? And they say, well, I'll have what you're having. It's like, well, you can't do that. So wouldn't it be better to have a Forrester's policy? So you can say, well, I have this policy. And it's one of ours that we're selling. You think that would give you credibility? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to change your habits? Are you willing to change what you're doing with your time? Like I know you like, you're like in three Bible studies in bowling league. Are you willing to give some of those things up to spend those 30 hours with us to help you do this? I'm always pointing back to that, gang. You willing to change? Yes, I am. Awesome. So, listen, work, associate, change. Is there anything here that you think you can't do of the things I mentioned? No, I can do all those things to get what it is I want. Awesome. You got them set up. Now they're eating out of your hand. It's like candy. All right. Now, what you do is <laughs> you're testing their ability to listen. Okay, Joe, so would you like me to make a recommendation on what to do next? All right, to start this journey of getting this right here? <laughs> Gang, you totally set them up, man. You totally set them up. It's like, yeah, what do I need to do next? Well, number one, we need to get you signed up for your license class. All right, so we got this thing called license coach or whatever, you know, whatever you use it. License coach, and let's... Let's go ahead and get signed up now. It's 49 bucks. We got a $150 discount if we can get you signed up right now. Are you able to get signed up right now? Well, yeah, sure. Okay, let's get you signed up. Do it now. Don't wait. Get them into class. Get them to commit $49. $49 stupid dollars. And then I give them the expectation, you know, this class only really takes about three days to go through, and then you can take your test right after that. It didn't got to take long. You know, within a week, you should have your license. Man, plant the seed of expectation of getting it done now. Joe, do you have, you know, a good two hours a night to put towards your class, two, three hours a night to get that done? Because if you get that done, man, quick, you're going to pass the test quick. Because that will help you start this process quicker. Remember, everything points back to that. All right. We have a conference coming up. I mentioned the National Com Conference. All right. It's January bump through that. Um, the ticket price is um, 
whatever it is, 250, whatever, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put this in your calendar. Can we put this in your calendar now? Let's get this in your calendar. Do you think you, you have the money to go ahead and get that signed up now, or do you just want to put it in your calendar? Look, I'm not going to push that hard. I'm going to push the National Conference all the time, but I, I just get started with them. No, he's trying to figure out if he can trust me. I'm going to say, let's just put that in your calendar. Let's book it in your calendar. You got your phone? Let's put it in your calendar. All right? Let's put that in your calendar. Put it in his calendar. Okay, the last one that you need to do is, you know what? This is key question. If you don't use this question, you're losing. It's like, Joe, Mary, does this business make sense to you? Oh, man, it totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. Okay, do you think if it makes sense to you, do you think it will make sense to people that you know? Okay, it, it's, a, it's um, a trap question. But it's an important trap question because it's a logic thing you're going where you're walking down this logic, right? You've already done this. Now you get this is where your business begins here. Your business, you building your business starts with that question. Joe Mary, does this business make sense to you? Yes, it does, Alex. Really does. I mean, if you if all those people have done what it is I want to do, man, it does. Great. Do you think if it makes sense to you and Mary, do you think it would make sense to people that you know? Because you say no? Well, yeah, it will make sense to people that, that we know. Awesome. In fact, I bet you you're probably thinking about five people right now that you think can do this business, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about it. See, that's, a, that's another take the temperature question, okay? Because they're, they're thinking, they're already thinking. If they're ambitious, they're these thinking, these type of people, they're thinking, man. So, like, just, who are you thinking about? Let's just write their names down, just for fun. Well, I, Joe Smith, how do you know Joe? Well, I work with Joe. He's always talking about making money, doing something else than what his job is. Okay, cool. I know this person. How do you know them? This person. Three, five. Okay, so you're... Are those like your top five people you've been thinking about? Well, hey, man, I've been thinking about, actually, there's two more that I think are going to kill this. All right, who are they? Awesome. Well, you know what we're going to do with them? This is where your business begins. We get this guy, Joe and Mary, started here, home base. We start them with the list of names. We do the phone calls. We do show them the plan. Then we follow up with their people, right, with their people, you know, stars. And then they're going to produce people that we're going to get going, that we're going to get going, that we're going to get going. And you start building your business. Do you see how that works? You implement the four basics of recruiting and the LWAC It'll be a perpetual business for you that you're not going to have to do a whole lot of ads, but you're building depth, you're building your width doing this, and you're building depth underneath your width. And you go team builder, you do the molecule, and then you repeat the molecule, you stamp it out in your business because you're teaching all your people to do this. Start LWAC and getting a list of names. Make sense? Man... This is how the business works. It's in here. It's what Andy teaches, the four basics of recruiting. All right? You do that over and over and over and over and over again, and you'll have a huge business. You'll go team builder to key leader to agency manager because you found enough people that want to do exactly what you're doing. They're doing this, and your business perpetuates beyond you which is what you want. You want to find people that, man, whether you do it or not, they're going to do it without you. Do you think Patrick and Su 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 Suzanne Connors or Mike and Noel Levitoch, do you think if Alex and Avian decide not to do it, they do it? Absolutely. That's who you want. Because I've plugged them into the system, plugged the Andy Albright. They're wanting to do all the things, right? 
Because they listen. They're willing to work. They're willing to associate. They're willing to change. Right? Awesome. All right, gang. Woo! That's all I got. <laughs> Man, this went way longer than I wanted. But you know what? It's all here. It's all here. It's in our promotion guidelines. All right. Awesome, man. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for plugging in. God bless. Got any questions? You know who to call. <laughs> All right, man. Take care.